I'm just going to do um, a real quick video here uh, just to <clears throat> respond to a, a couple comments I've seen um, just about, uh, you know, not really negative comments, but I value all opinions and feedback, but some of the feedback is just saying none of the, the stones that I see that you're showing uh, have any man-made manipulation um, show no signs of being altered by human hand. They're just rocks, pretty much. Um, well, this is something, fortunately, I have a pretty strong background in. Um, with my college background, being strong on the geological side and also took a lot of archaeological and anthropological classes, including a pretty extensive lab on stone tool, early human. It was boots on the ground in the field and also... We learned how to stone nap ourselves and use certain percussion techniques with flint and other materials. Uh, so you got a really good idea of what to look for and also to understand that there are so many different stone tools and a lot of the ideas of what they did. Some of them are speculative, but we need to use something called um, uh, experimental archaeology, which is where they actually recreate the use of what these tools did to figure out their function. Um, some are spiritual. Uh, some of these small little triangular things are nothing but beads. They could have been a form of currency at some point. We just don't know. I can tell you, I do know how to identify things that are manipulated by human hand. Um, and one of the real telltale signs is if the rock still has paint on it or enamel on it. Um, uh, rocks don't paint themselves. It's not a natural thing. Uh, this is a, a war kelp or um, you know, tomahawk head. You see all the, the different edges. It's um, an extremely tough um, piece of quartzite. Um, it's got the cutting edge there, um, counterweighted another edge. No matter where this would hit you, there's an edge. And you can see the manip uh, manipulation with a the notching there. But then look at the uh, the dye and pigment that's still on it. You see the pink, or it was probably red at once. Black. It's all pigment because the stone itself is white. And you can still see the actual enamels and dyes. A lot of these were made out of minerals and clays. Um, things such as cinnabar, hematite for the red, um, charcoal, carbon, um, um, and uh, pitch for the black. The... Um, top is black, the front is black, then it's got the red, which it's worn off on the sides here, you can just see it on the edge, and then white on the other side, classic colors, Native Americans um, were super into the color red, uh, very um, important, uh, colors of war, um, red, white, and black were the three colors, especially with the Iroquois and the Mohawk. Um, these were extremely um, important. Uh, they worshipped even, not worshipped, but venerated, a highly valued red cloth. Different cultures hold different things in, in value. Value systems are different depending on spirituality, and a lot of that is lost, and um, hopefully we can recover some of those ideas. Um, here's another piece. This is another a war item, very heavy um, type of rock, but we've got the pigment. That red cinnabar, um, hematite kind of glaze. Um, you can still see it on there, white, red, and black. Um, like I said, these rocks don't paint themselves, and they, they don't shape themselves like this. This is, a, you know, this is very, very symmetrical and very purposely done, and you can look at it from all angles, and you can just see the symmetry and the shape for purpose. Um, so I just want to show you a few pieces that still have that pigment on them, which is, is so neat. And uh, it's just a testament to the circumstances of how they were found. When entire banks get washed away and things were preserved in an oxygen-free environment, they tend to, to hold a lot of their original character. Um, unfortunately, a creek also damages a lot of the edges and the sharp contexts of where you can see the chipping and flaking. Um, and then different techniques changed when you got up into the Mesolithic period. They started making 
um, these highly polished axes. They would chip them out first, but then they would take hours and hours and smooth them down. It could have been for status. This is more of uh, something that you saw in um, Stone Age and right on to that cusp of Iron Age uh, Britain. Um, so uh, there's an example of some that do hold their uh, definition still. And these are found in plow fields, not, um, not in creeks. So you can see how much more detail is left on this point, almost like it was when it, you know, it was, it was originally lost. The, the, the point is broken. Here's another one found in a plow field. Um, these are points found near the Nishamini. Um, this is not penny pack finds. Uh, I keep uh, everything separated for the most part. Here's another example though. Here's a tool. Obviously this has been shaped. This is a basalt tool. You can almost see that it was a pen or a poker. Uh, who knows, it could have been used for, for sewing, for, for crafting leather. Um, but hear this. Hear how chimey it is. I mean, it's the perfect material for that job. Something that's very, very sharp with and smooth without friction. Kind of uh, a great replacement for metal. It's almost like a ceramic. Um, but... I can go through a lot more of them and the reasons why they're, they're here and what their purposes are for. Um, some of these aren't even uh, stone tools. Some of these are fossilized bone. Um, some are objects that I have no idea what they were, so I, I, I scoop them up. They could just be trash. you, know, you got to research it. I save glass because it helps date certain things for us. Um, and I save pottery, but I'm going to do a whole other video on pottery because... That's where you really start finding some interesting things with the dating, and you can put some context. Uh, so, uh, this is like my mad little laboratory room over here, but I just want to do a quick video, just put it out there that, you know, um, there are uh, a, lot of, a lot of ways and a lot of uh, things you can do to identify stone tools, but a lot of it's finding what material is being used, what pattern was being used. And then you have to know what context. Not every arrowhead you find is going to be a perfectly detailed arrowhead. Um, not everything is an arrowhead. Uh, there's a lot of different tools for a lot of different functions. There's sharpeners, there's picks, there's gouges, there's a lot of woodworking tools that are made of stone. They chose rougher stone for sanding and woodwork. Um, I'm going to show you one more piece that's up in my case here before I finish this video. This was found after a washout at the one site I go to along the penny pack. And you can see in context there were two tools and somebody was using the one to smooth the other out. And something happened where a bunch of earth and clay and this never got finished, but from the pressure and time, because this is a limestone, it just fused itself onto it. So it's like you can see the process of them making one of these. You've got a planing tool here, smoothing out a long looking projectile type thing on the top here, which is why I took this one. Very cool. Um, the issue with geologically with a meandering stream is that year to year, month to month, it's a whole different stream you're looking at. Um, entire banks change either from man-made constructions along the stream, detouring its path. It's always been an industrial watershed, you know, tons of mills uh, throughout the years. But um just wanted to show you a few of these things. And uh, depending on how and where you find them depends on what shape they're left in. And then there's a whole, you know, within the videos, there's trays and trays of just um, preforms, which are essentially rough outs before they're completed. You know, they were banging these out quick. Um, you find the entire quarry sites. When a rainfall happens, the stream flips another whole layer up, and you find a whole other time period going on. That's why things jump around. There's things found at this site that are thousands and thousands of years old, and then there's things all the way up through the colonial period. Um, 
stay tuned for some more whether you love it or hate it just appreciate it whether you don't sorry i wasted your time or not um i'm going to continue just putting stuff out there and uh, yep <laughs> uh you ain't gonna hurt my feelings so uh love to all and um all opinions are welcome try to keep the hateful ones to yourself if um if you want to know about anything, um, I'm putting together actually a doctoral, or I'm trying to, um, since psychology was what my degree is in, and archaeology is my minor, and uh, I'm just an amateur in that, I'm trying to get back into that field. Some of my collection was reviewed by people from Penn. Um, all of these were email correspondence. Um, most of them were very interested uh you know, obviously, most of them agreed with the findings. Um, I can post some of that stuff. Um, a lot of my sources, they're going to be on a gigantic work cited page, trust me, um, by the end of all this. And when I put out a more official documentary down the road, um, I'm giving myself a couple-year window to, to do that. All my sources will be there. Um, and it's not hard to research any of what I'm saying, Um when I'm just doing stuff off the cuff, some of my dates might be off a little bit, um, but a quick Google search will, you know, <laughs> will correct that, but it'll lead you in the right direction anyway. Um, but when you look at the amount of people that were here prior to European and what we call civilization, there were thriving communities and civilizations of millions of people. There were sophisticated cultures, religions, beliefs. There was probably a written language that we're overlooking or we wiped out. Um, and uh, these different people over time, some of them were insanely skilled. Um, and some of the stuff is uh, way, way older than, um, than what our current, you know, archaeological model shows some of the stuff is uh yeah it's that, that caveman stuff the cave people the neanderthals denisovan you know well anyways uh stay tuned stay safe peace out